Hi, this is Jessica with k and Greenhouse. I'm doing another presentation for our new plants for 2022 series. Uh, this one is going to be some of the new shrubs that we'll be getting in. I do have a separate um, slideshow for the new hydrangeas just because we have so many of those coming in and they're generally the most popular shrub that we sell at the garden center. Um, this one is going to be um, in the alphabet from A through M, which is the Latin name. Uh, A through M, not the common names. So if you're ready to get going, let's get started. Our first new shrub for 2022 is called Beauty Bush. Uh, Kelly Carpa is the Latin name on it. We have had this particular shrub, um, different varieties of this particular shrub in in the past, which we will also have again in 2022. Uh, Perglam is just the new one on the market. I'm getting it in from Monrovia, but it's definitely offered from other suppliers as well. Um, the, the main showstopper on this particular plant is the purple berries that you see here in the photograph. Um, the foliage is purple when it comes out in spring as well and then changes to green in the summer and then you get kind of a yellow fall color with this particular plant. It does flower but you don't really notice them unless you're up really close because they're so tiny um, and they're a very light lavender color so they're not nearly as bright purple as the berries are. Um, hardiness zone on this one is five to eight so you are going to make you're going to want to make sure that you are in the correct hardiness zone for this one um, you won't be able to grow it if you're you know in the country further north here in Wisconsin um, so just keep that in mind the mature size on this is four to five feet tall it'll be three to four feet wide at maturity it takes a little while to get bigger and as a note um, they do tend to get eaten or at least nibbled on by rabbits and deer. So if you have those, uh, if you have that as an issue in your landscape, make sure that you fence them and or spray them just to keep the critters off of them until they get big enough to be able to handle a little bit of you know browsing from the critters. Um, they are walnut tolerant though. I have two of them on my property and they're both still alive three years later. So I consider that to be a success. So definitely an option if you have uh, black walnuts or butternuts or hickories um, on your property. Um, full sun to part sun is preferred for this particular plant. So as long as you have four hours or more of sun to offer this, this shrub, uh, it should do just fine for you. Um, button bush is another one that we've had other varieties of in the past. Sugar Shack is a proven winners variety that I had not been able to get in before this year. So finally able to get Sugar Shack in. This one is the probably the shortest of all the varieties of button bush. Um, three to four feet tall, three to four feet wide at mature size. We have had fiber optics in the past and we will have that one again this year uh, from Bailey Nurseries. I believe it's the first editions brand. Um, button bush is a native in Wisconsin. So Sugar Shack and Fiber Optics are native ours, so they're varieties of a native species if you're interested in planting some of those on your property. Um, a great um, addition to if you have a wet spot in your property, you know, standing water is okay, but I mean, even if it's just, it seems like the water doesn't drain quite as quickly in one area, this is a definitely an option for you. Though it will tolerate, I mean, it doesn't have to be a wet site. Um, that's where they're native to are kind of stream banks. However, they will tolerate, you know, moist, well-drained areas as well, as long as they just aren't planted in an area that's really hot and dry. That's uh, that's basically what would, we would either kill it or it would just make it look really bad. The, the leaves would get crispy and brown and it just wouldn't do as well. Uh, with that said, part sun is actually best for this particular shrub. Four to six hours is best for it. Um, if you have east side or even underneath trees, I have um, two of them planted underneath some walnut trees. So again, walnut tolerant. Um, this one also you can see in the photo has a very unique flower. That is what the flower looks like on it and the pollinators love this plant. So you'll get, you know, the bees. Um, I don't know if hummingbirds particularly care for this, but butterflies flock to this, to this particular shrub when we have it in the nursery yard in the summer. Um, hardiness zone on this one is four to nine, so a little bit hardier than the previous slide. So you should be able to grow it um, at least in the southern half of, of this, uh, of Wisconsin. Uh, Red Orchard Dogwood is definitely not a new one for us. We have quite a few different varieties of this particular dogwood shrub. 
Uh, the new variety that I'm showing you here is Arctic Fire Yellow. We have had Arctic Fire Red in the past for a few years now. Um, the main difference on that is the yellow twigs on, on this shrub. Um, you can see the berries here are white. They come in, usually they appear in August. The birds do love them, so they don't last very long on the shrub, um, but it's nice to have them, even if they only last, you know, in the, in the late summer into fall, it's nice for migratory birds to be able to, you know, fuel up before they make their long journey south. Um, with the Arctic Fire Red, this one is also a little bit shorter than the, than the straight species. It's four to five feet tall and approximately the same width, might be up to six feet wide. So just make sure you have the, the spot for it that you can let it grow. Um, dogwoods do handle pruning pretty readily, but I just, you know, as they get older, the twigs get pretty thick and woody. If they don't keep the yellow full, you know, the, the twig color isn't gonna continue to be yellow. It'll be more brown as they age. So it's best if you can cut the really um, big um, branches out of them just to keep the, the new growth coming and to get that nice yellow um, twig color on these. Um, dogwoods are nice because they prefer full sun to full shade. So they'll grow basically anywhere you want to put them. They tolerate all soil types. So it doesn't matter if you have sand, loam, clay, or a mixture of all of those. Um, and they handle dry sites to standing water. So if you do have a wet site, this is definitely an option for you. Um, hardiness two is also, uh, two to seven is the hardiness zone on this. So they're a very tough plant. Um, the, the flowers that emerge in spring uh, will are clusters of white flowers that also attract butterflies. So if you're looking for another shrub that will attract pollinators, this is an option for you. Uh, Dutzia is one of them that we have had in the past. We typically carry cherry blossom, which we will also have this year in 2022. That one has a kind of a pink bud with a pink and white flower. Compacta is probably um, one of the, the older varieties. It's just one that I haven't gotten in the past. Um, but I like to put this one in kind of as a border and have it as an option for people that want smaller, uh, smaller shrubs. Um, this one's going to mature to three to four feet tall and approximately the same width. So it is a smaller shrub that you can put in. It has gorgeous white flowers in spring. You can see here, it just kind of covers the entire branch. Um, and it's kind of a nice substitute for mock orange. It's, um, the flowers are not as big, but there are more of them. So it gives you that kind of that same impact. Typically the flowers bloom mid to late May. Um, at my house, it's usually later May, but I also live out in the country, so I'm not as warm and I'm usually a week or two behind um, what you see in the Madison area. Um, full sun to part shade for this particular plant. So if you have four hours or more um, of sun in your property, this, this would do really well there. Um, hardiness too for this one is four to eight, so it is hardy for the southern half of Wisconsin. Um, it gets burgundy fall color, so you'll have the green foliage in spring and summer, and then you'll have a really nice burgundy fall color, and it is deer and rabbit resistant, so I can actually attest to that. I have cherry blossom growing on my property, and I had, I used to have a really large rabbit population until the hawks and owls came in and kind of took care of that for me, but I watched 16 deer walk across my property this morning, snuffling around, looking for food, and they avoided the Dutzia, um, both locations I have them in. So they, for whatever reason, don't like the shrub. So if that's an issue where you live, this would be a, a great option for you to plant. All right, another Dutzia I'm getting in this year that I have actually been looking for for a few years. Um, I, I've had a few customers ask about this one. It's a proven winner's variety called Chardonnay Pearls. And the main difference from this one, from the other ones um, is you can kind of see here in the photo it's kind of it's more of a lime green almost yellow foliage uh, instead of just a straight green so you'll get um, a little bit added added bonus in your landscape you'll have the yellow foliage um, in spring and again in summer um, but again you'll have the burgundy fall color too so that's an added bonus with this one and you can see here the same white the the smaller white flowers just line the branches and and cover the plant in spring when it when it blooms for this one, you are gonna to need to give it more of a full sun just in order to keep the, um, the foliage more of the yellow color. If you put it in too much shade, it will basically turn green. So you might as well just get compacta. 
Um, but Chardonnay Pearls is a little bit smaller, um, about three feet again, um, three feet tall and three feet wide. So again, it's a smaller variety. You can kind of put it almost anywhere in your in, in a landscape, especially if you have a smaller property um, that you just want to pop something in that'll give you a little bit of color in the spring. Um, hardiness zone on this one isn't quite as hardy as the other two varieties we sell. It's a zone five to eight, so you will need to keep it protected. Um, I wouldn't plant it, you know, if you have like a kidney bean type bed in the middle of your lawn, I would keep it away from that bed. Plant them a little bit closer to your house or if you're, in, you know, if you're in a zone three or four, I don't know that I would bother with the, this one. Um, we, we do have the other two Duzias, so those are, those are going to be a little bit hardier than this particular variety. Um, and again, with, with all Duzia, they are going to be deer and rabbit resistant. So if you're looking for something with the yellow foliage, um, you have spring flowers and you, you don't have to really worry about the rabbit, the rabbits and deer eating this down to nothing on your property. All right, this one, I love this plant. Um, I actually found it a couple of years ago when I was on a garden walk in, I believe the Wisconsin Hardy Plant Society had, had a garden walk that I went on. Um, this one is very unique to me. It almost looks like a house plant just because the uh, foliage on it is kind of a rougher texture. It's almost shiny. Um, they, the person that I saw had it planted on the north side of their garage, I believe. So it, w it really wasn't getting a whole lot of sun. I ended up finding it with Song Sparrow uh, before they closed up. And I have three of them planted underneath my walnut. So walnut tolerant plant, yay. <laughs> Not always easy to find. Um, the variegated foliage makes it really nice in the shade too because it makes the, the it kind of, it brightens up the area. So it pops a little bit better than you know, a darker green, like a U doesn't really pop much just because it's so dark already in the shade. This one, you can definitely notice it um, even from, from further away. It will tolerate full sun if that, you know, if you want to put it in full sun, that's perfectly fine. So it's a full sun to full shade plant, uh, very versatile. Um, it does not like to have wet feet, so don't plant it in an area that, you know, has standing water or even in just in spring. Um, if you have standing water and then it's dry the rest of the year, I would avoid this, um, but it, it can handle uh, droughty conditions. So if you have a dry spot in your yard, that's personally where I put it. If you have eight walnut trees, it's always going to be dry in that garden. So I put this this plant there. It's doing perfectly fine. Um, I would actually recommend to prune this one. It's not super low maintenance just because you will need to prune it. It grows very fast. Um, there's a green leaf type that I also have in my property that grows a lot faster than this one but this even I think it's I think last year was its third year in my in my property I still needed to prune it down at least halfway just because it was getting a little bit too wild for that spot um, and another note this one does have thorns they're very small um, they're smaller than like a rose or a barberry and they're not as numerous as a barberry um, but they're still there so just be aware of that when when you're planting or, or pruning it um, hardiness zone on this one is four to seven, so it is definitely hardy here uh, for the southern half of the state. Um, three to five feet tall and three to five feet wide. Like I said, you can keep it pruned a little bit smaller. I think mine are four feet tall. They're more of a columnar shape right now, so I'm guessing as they age, they'll be, you know, they'll fill in a little bit more than than they are right now. Um, and like I said, be, uh, probably because of the thorns, they're um, they're rabbit and deer resistant as well. So. I, like I said in my previous slide, I had a number of deer looking for food this morning, um, and they also avoided this particular plant, so it is definitely uh, rabbit and deer resistant. So this one is technically not new to us. Um, we have had this one way back, one of my first years that I was working at k and um, but I haven't gotten it in for quite a few years and I just decided this year we should try it again um, just to see because it is such a pretty pretty shrub. Um, this one is Jan Isley pink and Chianthus. There also is a Jan Isley red. I was not able to get in the red um, so we have this kind of blush pink bell-shaped flowers that are born in clusters. Um, they do bloom in late spring so it's kind of a June bloom here in Wisconsin give or take um, early to mid-June. The um, fall color on this one is also a really nice red color. So if you're looking for something that has a red fall color, you don't necessarily want a burning bush, this is a great option for you. Plus you get the really pretty flowers in spring. 
Um, the one caveat with this is it prefers acidic soils. So you might need to kind of tweak the pH a little bit if, if you don't have acidic soils. Um, I mean, it'll grow really well if you do really well with rhododendrons. Um, this would kind of fit in that same area. Um, but like I said, you can you can tweak the pH um, and just make sure that it that it grows well there. It prefers consistent moisture as well. So if you have a spot that's really dry, I don't know that I would put this one in there. It doesn't do as well unless you know you can make sure that it gets watered um, pretty consistently. The uh, light requirements in this is full sun to part sun, so four hours or more every day. The mature size on this one is about five to six feet tall, um, three to feet, three to four feet wide. The um, growing on this one is it typically is a slow grower, especially the first few years, but you won't see a lot of growth on it consistently. Um, so just be aware that it will take a while to get to the the full size. And hardiness zone on this one is five to eight, so you are um, going to need to keep it protected or just keep that in mind. If you are in a colder spot, you may not be able to grow this particular plant. A uh, spring vernal witch hazel is another one that I've been looking for for a very long time. Um, I'm getting this one and then the, the next slide too will be a variety of the spring vernal. Um, I believe I'm getting this one from Johnson's Nursery in Menominee Falls this year. Uh, you can see here the, the flowers on it are very similar to the common witch hazel. The main difference is this one blooms in spring. So we typically get a lot of people in um, right when we open in April and they want this shrub because they saw it blooming at Ulbrick Gardens in Madison. And I've never been able to get it in the past and I would really <laughs> like to try it. Um, the spring vernal witch hazel is also walnut tolerant just like the common witch hazel is. However, you are going to need to keep it protected because the deer and rabbits think that you are putting a buffet out for them when you plant this. So make sure you fence it or you spray it, whichever, you know, whatever you prefer to do. Um, full sun to park shade is best. So again, four hours or more a day. Um, you are going to need to give it quite a bit of space. So this one is kind of like the, the common witch hazel, 12 to 15 feet tall and 8 to 10 feet wide. So again, like I said, you're going to need to give it a little bit of space. So make, you know, don't put it in a bed that's three feet wide. It's just not going to be happy. And then you're not going to be happy because it's growing into your house and siding and all that stuff. Um, hardiness zone on this one is four to nine. So it's definitely hardy, at least in the southern half of Wisconsin here. And um, the fall color is the same as the common witch hazel in that it is a nice bright yellow color that you get in October. And this one is the other variety that we're, we're getting in. It's called Arnold Promise. Um, I believe I'm actually getting this one in from a nursery in Ohio, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but the, the main difference is between this one and the, and the past slide is the, the yellow flowers that you can see here. They still bloom in spring, so you will get, I, I want to say it's March that they actually bloom, but I don't have one on my property, so <laughs> I don't actually know uh, what to expect here in Wisconsin. But Everything else is the same. It's full sun to part sun. It'll be 12 to 15 feet tall, 8 to 10 feet wide. Um, the yellow flowers, and then in fall you will get the the yellow fall color, um, which doesn't matter as much with this one, just because the flowers will have already bloomed in spring. You don't have to worry about you know trying to find the flowers with the the yellow flowers with the yellow fall foliage. Um, and again, it is walnut tolerant as well. All right, Rows of Sharon, um, I had to get in a bunch of new varieties because I wasn't able to get in a lot of the varieties that I had last year or in the past. So Blue Angel is one of the many new varieties we're getting in. Uh, flower color on this is a light lavender color with the, the red center. Um, flowers attract butterflies and hummingbirds, and the, the bumblebees especially love these when they're blooming in our nursery yard. Um, you can see here Blue Angel is pretty floriferous, so you're going to get quite a few flowers with this particular variety. Uh, mature size on this is about five to six feet tall and five to six feet wide. It's more of a rounded habit than the columnar that some of them can be. Um, and full sun is best for flowering. It will tolerate part shade, you just won't get quite as many flowers. Um, hardiness on all rows of Sharon is five to eight or five to nine. Um, we're typically on the the northern end of its hardiness here in the uh, in Dane County. Um, and then again with all rows of Sharon they're all going to be walnut tolerant so I have been able to actually plant quite a few varieties on my property underneath my walnuts. 
Uh, blueberry smoothie is another one of the new Rose of Sharon. It's in the, I think it's the smoothie series possibly. We'll also have raspberry smoothie and strawberry smoothie, which you will see in a little bit. Um, blueberry smoothie, you, you can see the flower is a nice double um, lavender, almost looks like a carnation flower to me. Um, full sun is best for flowering, part sun is okay, so anything, you know, six hours or more is preferred, four to six hours is okay. Uh, mature size on this one, eight feet tall, well, six to eight feet tall, four to six feet wide. It is going to be a little bit more columnar than, than the Blue Angel on the previous slide. And um, again, with this one, walnut tolerant, you, know, you will have the yellow fall color. And then um, once it's established, you know, give it three to five years of consistent good watering. Uh, once that's passed, it is a drought tolerant plant too. All right, as promised, here is raspberry smoothie. It's not quite the double flower that the blueberry smoothie had. It's more of a semi-double flower. You can kind of, um, you can see that red eye that a lot of the Rose of Sharon have. Um, this one again blooms July and August. You've got quite a, quite a few flowers on this one. Um, six to eight feet tall again, and this one is definitely a columnar. It's only four feet wide, so you will get a columnar tall and skinny plant with this one. Um, again, full sun to part shade is, is um, best for flowering, and um, walnut tolerant for this one as well, and then of course drought tolerant once it gets established. And the last one of the smoothies that we're getting in is strawberry smoothie. Um, it's a very blush pink flower. The bud on it is kind of a, it's not a bright pink, um, but it's a, it's darker pink than the flower itself. You can see again, this one is more of a semi-double instead of that full double that the blueberry smoothie was. Um, so you may actually attract more of the bees and pollinators with the raspberry smoothie and the strawberry smoothie just because um, it's not such a full flower on it. Um, full sun to part shade, once again, hardiness to zone five, walnut tolerant, and then if you give it three to five years of consistent watering, it'll be drought tolerant once it gets itself established in your in your property. Um, the size on this one is, again, columnar like the raspberry smoothie is. It was It's six to eight feet tall and a three to four foot wide plant. All right, last year we had French Cabaret Red. This year I cannot find that one, so we have French Cabaret Purple which is actually very similar in uh, flower color and flower type and size. Um, this one is kind of like the, the flower in the photo that I have here is kind of spent. Um, the, the brightness of it is more of a rosy pink color um, than a purple in, in my opinion. Um, it's a double flower, so you don't really see too much of that red center um, that you do in a, in a single Rose of Sharon flower. Um, five to seven feet tall, and it's a four to six feet wide. Um, so this one can be columnar if you keep it pruned, um, but if you just let it grow, it'll be a, a little bit more rounded um, or vase-shaped. Um, and again, as with all Rose of Sharon, hardy to zone 5 and walnut tolerant, and then of course drought tolerant once it gets established. Um, Helene is one of the older varieties that I just have not really gotten in. Uh, at one point I was really only getting first editions of the Rose of Sharon in, and now I've kind of branched out a little bit. So Helene is one of the older varieties. Single flower, you can see here the white with the, the nice red center. Um, it will attract pollinators, butterflies, hummingbirds. Um, this one will mature at six to eight feet tall and four to six feet wide. So again, just kind of like the last one, depending on how much you prune it or let it go, um, will, you know, the size will vary depending on what you want to do. Um, hardiness again is to zone five, walnut tolerant once again, and of course drought tolerant once it gets established. All right, this year um, I have purple pillar coming in. Last year and this year um, we had white pillar. Um, so the pillar series are more definitely a columnar, um, a columnar variety. This one in particular, it's 10 to 14 feet tall at maturity, but only two to three feet wide. So definitely a very tall, very skinny, shrub at maturity. You can see here the flowers are kind of a lighter pink, almost lavender color, and then a very pronounced red eye in the center. Um, it'll attract the, the butterflies, hummingbirds, the bees, uh, so you'll have a lot of pollinators attracted here with your two months of flowers, um, and then the yellow fall color with all the rows of Sharon's that you'll see too. Um, full sun is best for flowering. Part sun, if you have four to six hours, that's fine too. And as with all the others, walnut tolerant and then drought tolerant once it gets established. 
So this is the reason why I have so many new ones coming in. This is the list of the Rose of Sharon that we have had in the past that I am not able to get in this year. Um, I should note though the Azuri Blue Satin. I'm not able to get it in as the shrub form, but I did find it as the tree form. So if you're looking for more of you know a, a tree form that you don't want the full shrub form there, uh, we will have the tree form coming in summer. Uh, that one is going to be more of a June delivery um, coming from our Canadian supplier. Um, but the Bluebird, Blue Chiffon, French Cabaret Blush, French Cabaret Red, Lavender Chiffon, Lucy, and Summer Ruffle are all not available in 2022. So we'll see what shakes out for 2023, but I believe I have uh, a good substitute um, with all the varieties that I was just showing you there. And this is our last one in this series here uh, with the alphabet A through M. The Hypericum or St. John's Wort is called Blue Velvet. Um, we will still have the other varieties of the St. John's Wort coming in, um, the more native type with the green leaves and the, you know, the yellow flowers like this. Blue Velvet has more of a bluish leaf on it, so it's, it's very stunning with the yellow flowers just because blue and yellow, at least to me, tend to be a, a great combination. Um, best flowering and for leaf color is Full Sun. So if you have you know six hours or more, that's that's great. Um, if you only have four hours, that's okay. Just note that you won't get as many flowers, um, and the the foliage may be more of a green than a than a bluish color if you put it in more shade. Um, this one is also a smaller shrub, so it can fit um, quite a few places. You can do it's two to three feet tall, and approximately three feet wide. The flowers typically show up in June. Um, typically they bloom for about a month and then they're done. Um, this one, there are, have been others in the past and we will be getting in some of the floral berry from Monrovia again. When they're done flowering you get those nice colored um, berries on them, whereas this one does not get those, I mean they'll still get berries but they won't get you know like a red or orange color like the floral berry will. Um, the Hypericum also is known for attracting pollinators so this is a great addition if, um, if you want to attract butterflies or bees. The all of the pollinators at the garden center love these when we when we have them in stock and this one's another one too if you have deer and rabbit issues on your property this is uh, resistant so I haven't actually planted them on my property I don't know if they're walnut tolerant and I don't know if the deer will eat them uh, you know at my house but um, on the list that I've seen, <laughs> this this is listed as deer and rabbit resistant. So it's a very versatile plant. Um, definitely something to to put in your in your landscape. All right, so that's what I have for you for part one of the new shrubs for 2022. Um, I have quite a few different presentations out there uh, for all of our new plants that we're getting in. I uh, hope to do a deer and rabbit resistant one and a walnut or juglone tolerant one as well yet this year. Um, do have a native one, so if you're into um, native gardening, that's an option for you to, to check out that one as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.